waiting for the book inside the camera. Sit right there, sit right there and hold that We thank you very much for your patience and your indulgence. So let us all stand for the national anthem of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago.
standing while two of our students recite the IRO prayer for us. Okay? Praise be to you. Praise, Praise be, be to you, you, Almighty God, creator of the universe and all that is in it. We thank you, O oh Father, for the opportunity which you have given us to increase our knowledge. May your divine grace enable us to study hard and use what we learn for the good of our fellow citizens. We pray that you will free us from selfishness, lust, greed, anger, and hatred. Warm our hearts with love, fill our minds with understanding, and strengthen our wills in the face of all difficulties. Help us, O oh Father, to make our beloved country of Trinidad and Tobago the kind of place we want it to be, a place where human dignity is respected, where equal rights are accorded to all citizens, where hard work is encouraged and rewarded, and where you, O oh God, raise the free. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, we each and every one of you to the Lions Cultural Center. Last week we began in San Fernando and we had quite an interesting week of activities where children from both primary and the secondary schools blessed our hearts in music, song, dance, drama, you name it. And this week we are in Port of Spain and we are indeed very, very happy to be here. Okay, we are already late, so we won't keep you with too much talk, but let me introduce our adjudicators. Miss Gloria Sargent, she's one of the regulars with us. Let's put our hands together. And also Mr. Junior Howell. And they will be adjudicating on all aspects of the drama today. We shall begin with monologue. And also, let me not forget the judge's assistant, Mrs. Clarice Innes. <laughs> Class 16B monologue. And so far, we have, I think, five competitors. And remember, we shall be choosing two in each category. We'll be going through to the finals in San Fernando sometime next month, okay? So we are into class 16B monologue. So for the first part of today's proceedings, let's welcome the former principal of Coffee Boys Anglican School, Mr. Franklin Phillip. Put our hands together. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Now before we begin, I am <laughs> Before we begin, just a few house announcements. Or the washrooms. I think the male to the left. Female washrooms to the right. Please, if you have to move, please move after the performance or before a performance takes place. Once the performance has started, please try to remain in your seat. Of course, if you have an emergency, we can't help that. But please remain in your seat. Um, please do not talk, as this, all these things could serve to disturb the competitor. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off at this time or put it on some more way it will not disturb the performance. And we move right into competitor number one from the Belmont Girls RC School. Doing for us school, more school. Please welcome Kaylee Williams. School and more school. You know something, Clive? The way things go in these days is like Trinidad being the most educated place in the world. 
That is something that does never fail to amaze me. I mean, the way how when we just make up we mind to do something, we just do and do until we overdo. Take this education thing for instance. For years now, everybody making noise, saying how the place didn't have enough school, and how them training and them in learning the right subject, and how is a set of idiots we school turning out. But you know what? Before you could say boo, the government starts to build one set of school called Junior Sec. School going up all over the place. Like people going crazy. No teacher to put in the school. But they can't say we air have school. School all about. Then everybody who's saying they have old school say that the government had to fix that too. So there's our next set of building going up all over the place. People going serious about this education thing. I know a fella who does study cane. He ups and say, how cane cutters must go back to school to learn how to cut proper cane. But before he could finish talking, a man from Tobago ups and say, you have to open a doors bin school to teach them garbage man how to do their job. I remember in the old days when all you had to do was pick up the garbage pan, pay it in the garbage truck, and the garbage man just go about the business. Now in these days, they had to learn a special way to lift garbage. So they do strain their back, dirty their clothes, or mash up the people and them garbage can. You know what? It's like school going up all over the place. In Trinidad. Bus drivers, you know. Bus drivers need to learn to go to a maternity school to learn how to deliver a baby. Ever since that baby born on the bus the other day, them bus drivers and them say, oh how them in train to deliver no baby. So, is our next set of school going up? Then, all of a sudden, a whole set of school going up all over Trinidad. But you know what? It does do me hard good to know that Trinidad has so much school. Let's give another round of applause. And if you want to see Kaylee and the other students perform, in later stages of this competition, you will have to be at the finals at the Creative Arts Center on the 5th. So we are going to choose two from this district and two from all the other districts, and they will meet in the finals at the Creative Arts Center. So we want to wish Kaylee and all the others who are going to present themselves to the judges this morning the best of luck. <laughs> Next uh, on stage is another pupil of the Be Be Belmont Girls RFC School. And the title of this piece is My Daddy. Put your hands together and welcome. Alicia Waterman. By Paul Keynes Douglas. My daddy is the best daddy. My daddy is the best, 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 best daddy. Don't tell me nothing. My daddy is the best. My daddy could drive the fastest. His car is the best. My daddy have a car, you know. It's the fastest car in the whole. 
She had a bucket of milk on she head. She felt up in the air, spent three times, and ran straight on she foot. Not one drop of milk fall. My daddy know how to bounce people. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You see, woodlands, chimney, the fire station, my daddy built all. Alicia attends the Belmont Girls RFC School. Now we are using a microphone today. Now that is me, Lita, assist with the recording because the sponsor would like to get information so that they could put on YouTube and so on. But for the finals, there will be no microphones, so I would just like you to know that. We are using a microphone here, but it's more mainly to get sound so that it could be sent to the sponsor so that the information, the performances can be distributed. And the final competitor, for, the, for this category so far comes from the Sacred Heart RC School. Thank you. I noticed the Sacred Heart girls are clapping and the girls from, that has to be Belmont girls are not clapping. No, we want everybody to clap. Right. Yes. This is what Sanfest is about. It is it's, it's developmental. We give you an opportunity to come and perform. Now, I would expect you, it is normal that you would want to clap for the person who is representing your school a little harder. That is okay. But we want you to clap all the children, give them a nice reception when they come on stage and when they leave stage. Is that okay? Is that asking too much? Girls? I'm not hearing you. No, no, we want to, we want to give everybody a fair chance and make everyone to feel comfortable as they come on stage. So, doing first teacher's pet from the Sacred Hearts Girls RC School, let us welcome Cameron, Cameron Cunningham. The Chess Pet by Christine Harvey. Mrs. Cunningham, I know that you are very busy, but if you could spare a moment of your precious time, I would greatly appreciate it. Let me start.
start by telling you that I thoroughly enjoyed your grammar lesson this morning. It was truly inspiring and uplifting. I shall never look at a comma the same way again. But the real reason I wanted to talk to you was concerning a conversation I overheard between you and Emmett. He said to you, and I agree that his voice was totally inappropriate and, dis and disrespectful, that Brina was your teacher's pet and that was why she never got in trouble. You responded very regularly, I might add, by saying, Emmett, I don't have a teacher's pet. I have never had a teacher's pet. This was very surprising to me, for you are such a likable teacher. Because it saddens me that you have missed out on the advantages and rewards to be had by this type of relationship, I would like to propose that you appoint me to be your pet. I realize that Brianna, Alex, and Gabrielle may have already submitted applications to you. That is why I decided to talk to you in person and explain why I would do a better job than anyone that you are presently considering for the position. In addition, no. will be mutually beneficial. Obviously, I will be willing and eager to fulfill the customary duties of a teacher's pet, such as running classroom errands with a smile, encouraging the other students to be kind to you when you're having a bad day, and tattling on students who misbehave when your back is turned. In addition, I would frequently shower you with compliments. You will find my repertoire of flattering compliments to be extensive. Here, let me give you some examples. One, your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Cunningham. Two, being in your class makes me never want to go home. Three, that shade of blue sure does bring out your enchanting green eyes, Mrs. Cunningham. Four, nobody teaches fractions like you do, Mrs. Cunningham. I can tell by the look on your face that you are impressed. But wait, can I? Are you ready to be in winner's row once again? And they have been for the last couple of years. And it seems that they mean business again. Let us give Sacred Heart another round of applause. Thank you. Okay, we have another competitor coming on stage in this category, 16B. Monologue. This time we go to the Moulton Hall Methodist School. Doing for us a piece entitled Tan Tan Say. Please welcome Anastasia Boris. Tan Tan Say by Miguel Brown. Well, look, my crosses. Tan Tan Say. The boy do feel like going to school today. Is why I say boy? Like I losing my hair in. Or feel is a new slang all the youngsters using. Boy, your foot ain't break and the school still standing. So stop talking stupidness this early morning. Boy, do fast and get yourself ready. Wash your face and wipe out the ampy. All this talk that school too hard and the teacher unfair is just a set of 
old talk that ain't getting you nowhere. Boy, you ain't tired singing the same song day after day, blaming everybody except yourself when things don't go your way. Boy, it's how many times I tell you already that nothing in this life does ever come easy. Boy, you, nobody don't get a crown without a cross, you know. People could only reap whatever they choose to sow. You ain't born with no gold spoon in your mouth and your bread ain't butter on no two sides. So why you feel that life must be an easy ride? Look at you. After all the talk I talked this morning, you still sprawl off on that bed and only stretching. How come you just feel to do everything except when it comes to your education and schooling? On Friday night, you did feel to lime whole night on the block and come in your mother's house at 11 o'clock. On Saturday night, you did feel to dance and party. And for the whole of Sunday, you did feel to watch the TV. Boy, how you go by them fancy treads and sneakers you just feel to wear. If you don't get good passes and a job somewhere, boy, all your youngsters don't really know the kind of pressures your elders had to undergo. Boy, look at how hard your mother has worked to provide for you, to feed you, to clothe you, and to educate you too. You know how much trouble and hell that woman see when your father passed away when you was a pickney. Since then, she working finger to bone and saving every penny. No job ain't too hard to make a better life for Pickney. What would have happened if she did give up hope and say she don't feel she could have cope? But hey, hey, you finally get off that bed like Tantan preaching, knock some sense into your head. And how come you bathe and dress so fast? Tantan ain't even self see you when you pass. But like you put on the uniform last night, but like you sleep in it too, nobody likes shortcut more than you. Look, do quick, Tantan don't talk. Time to go to school and walk the talk. Remember, hard work is the only way to succeed. Now come kiss your Tantan before you leave. No cross, no crown. Let us give Anastasia Boris another round of applause. And we wish Anastasia and Kaylee and Alicia and Cameron all the best. Let us give all of them a round of applause. So very soon, we will move to class 17, storytelling. So we want all those students who are participating in class 17 to be ready in a few minutes as the judges tally their marks and decide who are the two students they have chosen to move on to the finals. We want to remind you that this festival would not be possible without the assistance, assistance of the National Gas Company. They have been sponsoring for the last 10 to 12 years and uh, over the last two or three years, they have been putting a little more effort into promoting the festival. And the festival is held for the children of primary and secondary schools between the ages of 13 and 19. So let us give the NGC a, a round of applause. No, you could do better than that. These are the people who will be supplying 
your prizes. These are the people who gave you the television set, and Secret Heart will know about that, the television set and the iPods and so on. So we want to thank them and hope that they will continue to sponsor this festival for as long as it is, as it is possible. We also want to thank the Ministry of Education for granting permission to the schools to participate. And as a matter of fact, the Ministry of Education, the curriculum department has been involved. And we are also, we are also receiving uh, assistance from the Creative Art Department at the University of the West Indies. Because they all see that there is something worthwhile in the festival. So how well are you ready? Okay, so we move on to class 17, storytelling. And first on stage is a pupil of the Moulton Hall Methodist School. That we have one more competitor in class 16B monologue. So let us welcome from the St. Bob's Government School, doing for us, Mr. Nobody. Put your hands together and welcome Abikele Gomez. Mr. Nobody by Anonymous. I know a funny little man, as quiet as a mouse who does the mission that is done in everybody's house. Tell us no one never seen his face and yet we all agreed that every play that we break was cracked by Mr. Nobody. Tis he who always tears our books and leaves the door ajar. He pulls the button from our shirts and scatter pins afar. The squeaking door will always squeak for Perthy, don't you see? We leave the oiling to be done by Mr. Nobody. The finger marks upon the door by none of us are made. We never leave the blinds unclosed to let the curtain fade. The ink we never spill, the boots are lying around, you see, are not our boots. They all belong to Mr. Nobody. Mr. Nobody and uh... Abikili Gomez attends the St. Barb's Government School. Are there any more students in this category? Seventeen, storytelling. And first on stage is a young lady from the Moulton Hall Methodist School. And the title of this story is Anansi and the Turtle Go to Dinner. Anansi and the Turtle Go to Dinner. Please welcome Kyla Hall. Anansi and Turtle Go to Dinner by Alfred Sherlock. One day, Anansi the Spider picked some yams from his garden. They were extra beautiful, delicious yams. So he baked them carefully in the fire. Then he sat down to eat them up. Just as Anansi was about to put the first bite in his mouth, he heard a knock on his door. Oh no, thought Anansi, who can that be? But he opened the door. There was Turtle, who looked very tired. Turtle said, Anansi, please me in. I've walked so 
far today and I'm so tired and hungry. So what can Anansi do but let him in? But Anansi was too selfish to share with his beautiful, delicious yams with anybody else, even a guest. So he came up with a nasty plan. Just as Turtle sat down and began to reach for some yams, Anansi yelled at him. Turtle, your hands are all dirty. You can't eat with your hands all dirty. Go wash them. And Turtle hands are really dirty because Turtle used them to walk all day. Slowly, Turtle crawled to the river, washed his hands, and slowly crawled back to the table. But meanwhile, and Nancy started gobbling up the yams. By the time Turtle got back, the yams were half gone. And just as Turtle sat down and began to reach for some yams again, and Nancy yelled at him again, Turtle, your hands are still dirty. Go wash them again. And Turtle's hands were dirty because Turtle used them to crawl back from the river. Sadly, Turtle got up and went to wash his hands again. By the time Turtle had crawled all the way back, he saw that Grady and Nancy had eaten up the other half of the yams and that they were all gone. Turtle looked at Anansi and said, Thank you for inviting me to dinner. If you're ever near my house, please come by and let me return the favor. And Turtle began crawling slowly away to his house. Well, as time went by, and Nancy the spider began thinking more and more how Turtle had promised to feed him a fruit dinner. And Nancy was still feeling greedy, and he wanted to get his free dinner. So one day, Anansi walked over to Turtle's house. And Nancy got to Turtle's house just about dinner time, when the sun was going down over the river. Turtle was lying on a rock in the sun. When Turtle saw Anansi, he said, "Hello." there, Anansi, have you come to have dinner with me? Anansi said, yes, that would be very nice, thank you. And he was getting hungrier and hungrier. So Turtle dived down to the bottom of the river to set the table for dinner and get everything ready. Well, and Nancy was lying on a rock on the shore. Pretty soon, Turtle swam back up and said, Oh, and Nancy, it is all ready now. Please come and try meat for dinner. And Turtle dove down again and began to eat the green leaves he had for dinner. And Nancy tried to dive into the water, but he was a spider, not a turtle, and he couldn't dive that deep. So Nancy came up with an idea. He put lots of stones into his coat pocket. 
and he was heavy enough to get down to that dinner. Well, and Nancy saw Turtle's table with all the delicious food and the other delicious food, his mouth was watering. And just as Nancy began to reach for some of Turtle's food, Turtle stopped him and said, Nancy, you're surely not going to eat with your coat on. And Nancy said, oh yes, what was I thinking? And took off his coat. But without the stones in Nancy's pocket, he was not heavy. So Nancy floated right back up into the surface of the river. Sadly, Anansi put his head into the river and watched Turtle eat all the delicious food. Monkey break their back for a piece of pomerac. Hello. Anansi and the Turtle go to dinner, and that was Kyla Hall and she's a student at the Moulton Hall Methodist School. Another word of, of caution, um, just remember, teachers and pupils, that you should be familiarize yourselves with the rules. Whichever class you are competing, please familiarize yourselves with the rule, rules concerning what are the things that are applicable? What are the things that you can do? And what are the things that you cannot do? As I said in South, I suspect that the judges will allow for certain things in the preliminaries. The finals will be a, little, a, will be a different kettle of fish. Um, you will not get away with what you will probably, what the judges will allow to slide by at the preliminaries. Okay, and I'm saying this, um, read the rules. I saw where a child played very, very well. M instrumental solo played very well. And what she did, she came with um, the accompaniment that she used. She used accompaniment, and that is not allowed. And also, although she played very well, she was disqualified. Because the rule clearly states that you are not supposed to have any kind of accompaniment for that part of the competition. Are you ready, Mr. Howell? Good. So, so we move, we save the Moulton Hall Methodist School. And this pupil is also, she's not here? Tell me more, tell me more. Sacred Heart Girls RFC School. Doing for us a Nancy and the Magic Pot. Please welcome Jada Marie Allen. Nothing but 
Tetsuro, he shouted. Don't make me see. The pot then said, Make me laugh or sing an old time calypso and I will cook you up a delicious meal. Really? Really? exclaimed Nanansi, opening his eyes wide as if he could see the pot of food. Listen to the joke and Nancy tell the pot. One day, a wealthy businessman was walking his pet goat goatee on a safari trip. The following day, goatee got lost chasing after butterflies. Just then, he noticed a leopard speeding in his direction. He then saw a pile of bones just lying on the ground. Immediately, he started to chew on the bones. Just when the leper was about to jump on Goatee and gobble him up, Goatee blurted out, Mmm! This leper tastes in good man! The leper ceased his attack in mid-air as a look of terror overcame him. He turned around and disappeared into the trees. Just me of chicken, peas, and rice. The smell almost killed Anansi, who had not eaten for a very long time. When Anansi was about to wash out the pot by a nearby river, the pot shouted, No! No! You must never wash me! Leave me as you find me! children eagerly asked him if he had brought home any food. He threw two mingy looking bananas and did not tell a soul about his secret. Next day, Anansi returned to where he had found the pot. To his great delight, it was still there. So he quickly shouted, Delicious meal. This time, Anansi decided to sing our old time calypso by Merchant. Now, more than ever, we must show discipline, tolerance, and production. The bell of strong and better nation. I say, this is the main foundation. The pot was amazed by Anansi's calypso. The pot cooked up a delicious dinner of roti, potato, chana, and curry chicken. And Nancy had a feast. But every day, Nancy would eat his belly full and would not even tell his own family about the secret. Nancy's wife began to realize that her husband getting quite wrong in the midst of a famine. She could not understand this, as nowadays, Anansi would not even bother to take any portion of the meager food she would gather for their family. So this day, she decided to follow him when he left home. She followed him and saw when he took out the pot and heard him say, or sing an old time calypso and I will cook you up a delicious meal. And Nancy decided to sing another calypso. Her eyes popped out of her head when she saw the food the pot had boiled up. But Nancy sat down, ate all the food, licked his lips, turned over the pot and covered it with some leaves. As soon as Nancy left, Mrs. Anansi wasted no time. She ran home to fetch her starving children, ran back, turned over the pot, and said, Don't make me see, just as Anansi said it. The pot then said, Make me laugh or sing an old time calypso.
Sue, and I will cook you up a delicious meal. Mrs. and Nancy told the pot a joke. The pot laughed and laughed and laughed until he cried. The children ate all the food. They left nothing. Now, Mrs. and Nancy is a very tidy lady. So when all the food was finished, she took the pot down to the riverside. And although the pot told her not to, she still gave it a good wash. She then went back, turned over the pot, and left it just as Anansi left it. Next day, Anansi returned and said, Don't make me see. But nothing happened. Don't make me see. Don't make me see. The pot remained quiet. Anansi decided to examine the pot. So he quickly shouted, Don't make mercy! The whip turned upon him and gave him one piece of eating. Whip! Whap! Whap! <laughs> Poor greedy Anansi. Anansi and the magic pot. Anansi and the magic pot. And we heard that from Jada Marie, Marie Allen, who attends Secret Heart. Give a nice round of applause. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll move on to class 18 in a little while. Each guest, teachers, pupils, and supporters, good morning. I am Ronnie Sampson of Secret Heart Girls Roman Catholic School. I will speak about reaching out to the arts for the answers to a healthy lifestyle, a form of therapy, and creating, developing a holistic individual. I want you to look around. No, really, look. Now, look at the person next to you. Not me, the person next to you. shoes. Now, look at yourself. All the things around you and the people next to you, you are all an expression of art. Can you imagine a world without art? Well, can you? What is art? Art is not just a painting on a wall or a dramatic presentation or so. Art represents our creative expression and our interpretation of all we see and feel. Art appeals to our heart and all that is in us. Firstly, how many of you in here like to dance? Good! Do you know that in reaching out to the arts through dance can help with maintaining a healthy lifestyle? Dance is not only a form of enjoyment, but also exercise. Your mind to focus and create. Your body to burn calories, lose weight, and strengthen your muscles. And it's a form of self-expression. Which brings me to my second point, therapy. Do you know that art is used as therapy to help people manage stress? Not only big people have stress, but children too. I have SEN too, yeah! allow their clients to draw images from their dreams and what they feel on the inside and express it through paintings, drawings and sculptures. And now to my final point, 
creating holistic individuals. Think about walking around with your head lopsided. The arts help create a balance. And the Ministry of Education has seen the importance of developing a holistic child through a holistic education. In SEA, we now have drama, art, and music components. And students have the opportunity to use these learned art forms to develop self-confidence and express themselves artistically and enter competitions like Sandfest. In conclusion, we can all reach out to the arts for the answers to a healthy lifestyle, a form of therapy, and to develop a holistic individual. So parents, teachers, guardians, save a life, express yourself, create a beautiful world, and add greater meaning to your life. So reach the arts today to become a better you. Let us say it again for Ronnie Sampson. <laughs> Reaching out to the art, to the arts for answers too. And um, maybe some of you didn't hear Ronnie quite well. There are quite a few reasons for that, and I hope that Miss and others will not be too. Don't be too worried. The judges will take a lot into consideration. Um, if we were at City Hall, then the acoustics there are much better than here. Okay? And um, the judges heard her quite well. And they will do what is necessary. They will judge the performance as necessary. So don't be too worried. But let us give her another round of applause because she's the only person in that category and uh, she did quite well. She did quite well. So can I now ask the Bellman Girls RC School Choral Group to assemble on stage? And at the end of each performance, the judges are going to give some comments. And those comments are supposed to assist you, even if you are not progressing into the further stages of the comp competition. Those comments are intended to help you to correct some of the little areas that where you need to improve. So already on stage and ready to perform are the girls of the Belmont Girls RC School. And they will do for us a piece entitled The Grasshopper. Let us hear it for Belmont Girls RC School. Your bubble. There's a moral to this tale. Your head is straight for trouble. 
and went out their yeah, grand supper, came begging for some bread. The answer shook their heads and said, You're going to end up dead. Hey, grass up again, hey to burst your bubble. There's a moral to this tale. Your head is straight for trouble. Okay, okay, I've heard enough. So what's the moral? Tell me please. I bet the moral's full of don'ts. Don't sing now with the summer. Don't party till you're fed. Don't waste your days just having fun. Who along your own in bed? No. The moral of this story is, it's smart to plan ahead. And they did first the grasshopper. Let us give them another round of applause. We could do better than that. Let us give them another round of applause. Nice. And uh, another round of applause for the conductress. Okay. And. And he says that if you want to see your performances, just go to Google, type in YouTube Hollis Clifton. YouTube, yes, Mr. Good, right? YouTube, H O W L I S C L I F T O N, and uh, you will be able to see your performances live. Hello? They want to know if today. They only want to know for today. Okay, so we, next on stage, the Sacred Heart Girls RFC School again. Please assemble on stage, and they will do for us. Daddy fell into the pond. Sacred Heart Girls, Daddy fell into the pond. Call speaking. Class 18.
And that was Sacred Heart Girls RFC School doing first. Daddy fell into the pond. And we have another offering coming up from the same school. Could the next group please enter the stage, Sacred Heart Girls? Sacred Heart will do for us if I were the only person. If I were the only person. Put your hands together for Sacred Heart Girls RC School. think about but because we live we are not living by ourselves because we have to share and deal with one another yes we need good manners we need to say thank you I'm sorry good morning so thanks for reminding us um, Sacred Heart Girls let us give them another round of applause from 16B, monologue, 
Moving on to the finals. Ah, from Moulton Hall Methodist School, Anastasia Boris. And from Sacred Heart, Cameron Cunningham. And in class 15B, public speaking, moving on to the finals, Ronnie Sampson. Storytelling. Going on to the finals from Moulton Hall Methodist School, Crystal Best. Sorry. Ah. Probably Mark is in the wrong place. Crystal Best didn't perform. Okay. That was a misprint. Kyla Hall goes on to the final from. Moulton Hall Methodist, and from, thank you. Yes, give her a nice clap, give her a clap. I will wait. And from Sacred Heart Girls RFC School, Jada Marie Aline. And in class 18, call speaking, Sacred Heart, Girls, both pieces went on to the finals. Daddy fell into the pond, and if I were the only person. So congratulations. Please collect your final cards at the table before you leave, and also collect your remarks sheet. As I said, the judges have given you some some things to think about that could or will, should improve your performance.